know the school rest. Uh, we welcome Reverend Jim Martin back to the pulpit. And um, is there any other announcements this morning? Please join with me in a call of worship that sounds in your bulletin. Praise and glory to you, Creator Spirit of God. You make the bread of communion a part of our daily sacrifice. You come like the wind of heaven, unseen, unbidden. You are to comfort us, to give us courage beyond our expectations. Speak with us, Holy Spirit. All we say and think this day.
come, Holy Spirit, rain upon our dry and dusty lives, wash away our sin, and heal our wounded spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, you poured out your spirit upon the gathered disciples, creating bold speech, open ears, and a new community of faith. We confess that we hold back the force of your spirit among us. We do not listen for your word of grace. Speak the good news of your love, or live as people made one in Christ. Have mercy on us, O God. Transform our timid lives by the power of your Holy Spirit, and fill us with a flaming desire to do your will. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God is love. The Spirit of God dwells in us all. join me in prayer. God of wisdom, power, and majesty, who are we that you should look with favor upon us? Yet you have written your law upon our hearts that we may know your righteousness. You have sent the prophets to teach us obedience. Your Holy Spirit guides us. We have assurance that you will never forsake us. Jesus Christ reveals all that we know of you, and we give you thanks for his redeeming love and for his sacrifice on our behalf. Help us to be still and know that you are God, that you, we may hear you speak to us amid the babble of this world. Give us ears to hear your voice. As demands are made and pressure mounts, put us at ease and sustain us through your presence. Help us to find the discipline to be more faithful. Time passes, yet our task remains undone. Translate our desires into commitment and keep us from putting off decisions that demand energy and effort. Keep us awake to your Holy Spirit's presence with us and instill with us the confidence to act accordingly. Enlighten us with your wisdom. Awaken us to the abiding testimony of your love. Illume the dark places of nagging doubt. And by your power, make us bolder and better disciples. Help us to walk in your way and do your will. Help us to love you with all our heart and strength. And we ask that you would make us a blessing to you and that you would help us to make your church a blessing to each other. Grant to us courage and trust and help us to grow in love of your creation. In your great wisdom, O oh God, you created us. In Jesus Christ, you came to redeem us and through your Holy Spirit, you guide us. Grant that the light that you have kindled within our hearts may shine forth in our lives. This we ask through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join us with me for the prayer of illumination. O oh God, Sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. Let sinners be consumed from the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. The word of the Lord. Our epistle reading this morning comes to us from Paul's letter to the church at Rome in the 8th chapter, verses 22 through 27. Listen now for the word of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly, while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who stretches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the spirit, because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And our next reading is uh, from the book of Acts, the second chapter Verses 1 through 21. Listen again for God's word to you. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came the sound like a rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues of fire appeared among them and... A tongue rested on each of them, 
And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in their native language. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all those who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Corinthians, Medes, Emilites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Thegra and Familia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Cretans and Arabs, in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. Now this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see vision, and your old men dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks. Well, I don't know about this church, but uh, my experience in being a Presbyterian these last many years has been that we Presbyterians don't like Pentecost much. That's because the Holy Spirit scares the bejeebers out of us. And so I want to welcome you into a newness of the Holy Spirit on this Sunday that we celebrate the Pentecost. May the Holy Spirit stir up new life in you. Now that's a little too tame for rushes of wind and thongs, tongues of fire. May the Holy Spirit rage in your hearts like fire, blow in your mind like a hurricane, and speak through you with the tongues of angels. The Spirit of God, we don't talk about that person of the Trinity much. The Holy Spirit, though, has always been around, even if we Presbyterians don't like to admit it. God has always been triune from eternity. God begat the Son, and the Spirit is the life that exists between them. The Spirit had hovered over creation as God spoke it into existence. When Israel mourned and lamented in exile, the Spirit breathed new life into them like the wind animating a valley of dry bones. When two pregnant kinswomen met, the Holy Spirit filled Elizabeth and she prophesied to Mary, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. 
So here at Pentecost, it's not the spirit itself that is new. Rather, it's the spirit being poured out in a new way. The spirit in our scripture came as wind and fire, giving the disciples the ability to speak other languages in such a fashion that believers from all over the world who had come to Jerusalem, because Pentecost is a Jewish festival, all of them heard them speaking in their own language. It's kind of like talking to a teenager, I think. They have their own language. So Peter, a preacher who was quick to grasp what an opportunity this miracle was, well, he started preaching. That's what preachers do. And Peter preached a very nice three-point sermon that I'm going to steal this morning. First, Peter talked about the Holy Spirit. He said the long hoped-for day when the prophet Joel's prophecy about the Spirit being poured out on all flesh was finally here. I will pour out my Spirit upon your flesh, and, my, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see vision. Your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my Spirit and they shall prophesy. The second point, Peter talked about Jesus Christ. Peter identified Jesus, this man you crucified and killed. God raised him up, having freed him from death. And those are in the next few verses of this passage from Acts. And then finally, he quotes the Old Testament. God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus who you crucified. And the third point, and here I'll let Peter speak for himself. He says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all, even those far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. That's not a bad little sermon. And perhaps that's why it's in the Bible. The Holy Spirit has been poured out for all, and that means you, all of you. Jesus, the crucified and risen one, is the Christ. Repent and believe. Be forgiven. Receive the gift of the Holy Spirit that God has given you. I think the newness of the Spirit's coming at Pentecost is talking about both salvation and that that gift of the Holy Spirit is available to everyone all human flesh, to everyone, everywhere, to people of every nation, both men and women, young and old, both slave and free. And a note about slavery in the Bible, it wasn't like slavery in the United States in the uh, 18th century. Uh, much of the, much or most of the Roman world were enslaved uh, because they had been taken over. Also remember that there's still slavery in our world today. It's not the chattel slavery of the Civil War era, but the slavery of human trafficking that goes on every day. Maybe you're like me, maybe you've grown so familiar with this mind-blowing passage about the Holy Spirit that you no longer find it, well, mind-blowing? Have we grown so accustomed to the good news of Jesus Christ that it doesn't always seem good and certainly doesn't seem very urgent? 
So I want to invite you to wrap your mind around this. The very spirit-filled life that exists between God the Creator, God the Son, that relationship is now available to each of you. And this spirit's easy to get. Just accept it, and it's yours. If we were baptized, if we were Baptists, I'd say you had to be baptized, but since we're not, just accept it. And then what? What sort of things might happen when the spirit life that exists between creator and sustainer gets poured out on God's sons and daughters in the world? To answer that, it's helpful to turn to some other passages in the New Testament. At the highest level, the pouring out of the spirit brings forgiveness, new life, and frees us from the laws of sin and death. When the spirit of the triune God is poured out on you, it gives you gifts like wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, prophecy, discernment, interpretation. And there are greater gifts of the spirit, faith, hope, love. When the spirit of the triune God is poured out, its fruit starts to grow in your heart. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Perhaps these lists are familiar to you, but there are other passages that hint at other gifts and fruit that the Spirit stirs up. In Romans, Paul says, those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on life and peace. The Spirit makes us heirs and therefore gives us the capacity to cry, Abba, Father. He goes on to say that the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought. I can't tell you how many times in the hospital people say to me, I don't know how to pray or I don't know what to pray. I hear that more than once a week, sometimes more than once a day. Yet that very same spirit intercedes for us and sighs too deep for words. In Psalm 104, we learn that the Spirit of God renews the face of the earth, breathing resurrection life into that which dies. And in John's Gospel, Jesus promises that the Spirit will be our advocate, the one who guides us and keeps us and leads us to truth. And all this and more is available. And when you think about the condition of the world in which we live, I'd say it's urgently needed as well. Because the Spirit of God, which does all these wonderful things in people's lives, is needed, increasingly needed, in a dark, dispiriting world that we live. May all of you feel the newness of the Spirit this Pentecost and beyond. Amen.
remember the words of our Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give than it is to receive. With gladness, let us present the offerings of our life and labor to our Lord. I'm sorry. I forgot. At my church, we didn't do the uh, affirmation of faith on Communion Sunday. But we'll do that now. So please uh, stand and let's uh, affirm our faith together uh, as we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Now you can remember the words of Jesus, that it is more blessed to give than it is to receive, and offer the, um, and collect the offering. My goodness. pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts and guide us as we endeavor to use them to bring your kingdom here to earth. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west and north and south to sit at table in the kingdom of the Lord. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took the bread, blessed it, and broke it, and their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust in him to share the feast which he has prepared. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. In his baptism by John, your spirit came with gentle wings, settling on him your blessing. In the wilderness of temptation, your spirit stood with power in his life and ministry. Your spirit led him to serve the poor, proclaim freedom from the bondage of sin, open eyes with face sight, and befriend the friendless and outcast. In all he did and said, he announced the coming of your saving might. By his death on the cross and rising from the tomb, he broke the power of death and led the way to eternal life. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take from your creation this bread and this juice, from the gifts that you have given us, and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this our sacrifice and praise as a living, holy offering of ourselves that our lives might proclaim the one crucified and risen. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and juice that the bread we break and the cup we bless may become the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name, that we might be one in ministry in every time and place. By the fire of your spirit, forge in us one church, many different people together in Christ's embrace. Set our hearts aflame with new love for the truth and desire for your will that our witness to Christ may burn brightly. Keep us faithful in your service till Christ comes in final victory and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. On the night of his arrest, our Lord Jesus took the bread and broke it and gave thanks to God and said, This is my body given for you that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. And when supper was ended, he took the cup and again he gave thanks and praise to God and gave the cup to his disciples and said, This cup is my blood, the blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Friends, whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim our Lord's death and resurrection now and forevermore. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the cup of salvation. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Let us pray. Gracious God, may we who have received this sacrament live in the unity of your Holy Spirit, that we may show forth your gifts to all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
go out into the world with the wind at, of the spirit at your back and the tongues of flame at your front. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint of heart. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord. And go with the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.